and increase the ISO, and I would get rounder stars, but then I'm going to end up with a, a noisier image. Excuse me, there's a loud clicking sound. Right? It's coming from the speaker, Dale. It's in the speaker system. I thought that was to keep me on the case. <laughs> it's your metronome. Yes. So um, I doubled the ISO and with the same image. Now, the one thing about these last few images, this is with a, a lens that's an f1.8, so it's significantly faster than the, than the image that I showed at the beginning. Um, a 1.8 lens is to get something faster, it goes up and triples in value. So I have an 85 millimeter that's about a $600 lens. It's 1.8. If I want the 1.4 version, which is, I guess, what I have to stop faster, it's um, about $1,800. So there's a significant investment there that I can't make. So this is the fastest that I can get. Uh, if we crop in on this, we still see the elongation. So 15 seconds is going to give you star traps that, that um, aren't necessarily desirable. This one is um, a three second exposure, but the ISO is cranked away up to 6400. And if you crop in on that, I don't know if it's coming through on the projector, but it's pretty pretty noisy. A lot of grain. So it looks good from back here. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Front of you, you see the grain. Yeah, no, if you look at it on a laptop where you get uh, you know, <coughs> a real sharp, bright display, you can see you can see the graininess in it. Um, now here's an image, obviously that's uh, this is Andromeda right there, and this is only a six-second exposure. This was up at Bill Beers' place, and you know the ISO is still up pretty high, so I can keep the the uh, uh, elongation to a minimum. It's almost non-existent here, but again, there's a lot of there's a lot of grain in this image. Um, you can see one of the companions here just just barely making it up. But I won't be able to do better. So one last image here. This is up in Charlevoix. You can see the the difference that light pollution makes. Um, this is a five second exposure, no different than the ones in Arizona, but look at how bright the sky is. You know, there's, a, there's a significant light. In Charlevoix, it's pretty dark skies, um, relatively speaking. Again, that, it's pretty, um, in five seconds, you get very little movement, right? So five or six seconds is about the maximum time. If you want tech sharp stars, that's about the best you're going to get. Now, if you go back, to the 70s, they used to build these farm door trackers, and they they worked off of a, a geared AC motor that would drive the camera on an axis. And, and these get significantly more sophisticated um, as you go along. This one, uh, the gentleman designed and built, and they cost them about $250 just for the material. You know, it looks like he cobbled it together out of his kitchen out of his uh, garage, but it's actually got several parts on it. There's a computer that's tied into it to help it to re uh, correct for a couple of different errors in, inherent in the design. <coughs> and, uh, you know, he probably spent a week building it um, on top of $250 in the materials. So I didn't really have time to do that, and that one looks a lot cleaner. Uh, it, it lists for $399. I got it when they uh, ran special on it for $299. So for $50 more, I got an all metal construction. Um, highly accurate. It's very accurate. Incredibly accurate. And uh, there's a really good article that was written up in Skank also. Um, they were really impressed with, with how well the mount works and how simple it is to use. So. When you buy it, you can buy it as a package. Um, it comes with a mount gear. It's all metal construction, all metal gearing. There's no nylon gears or bushings in it that will wear over time. Uh, it comes with this polar alignment scope that makes it extremely easy to align it on Polaris, well, on Celestial North. And 
Um, you want to get a ball head, and you can buy it packaged with a Yachtron's ball head, <coughs> along with the tripod as well. I didn't need that because um, I carry my camera tripod in a ball head. I have it with me all the time. So what I need to, to do these guided images, the stars, in addition to what I already, already carry in my car everywhere, and even when I travel, I travel with my camera. Everything sits in this bag. The whole, the whole mount. This is it. So I take the ball head, I take the ball head off of uh, off my tripod and I mount it on the the uh, tracking platform and then I mount the tracking platform right on the tripod. And the only thing I have to worry about doing is making sure the tripod's level, but most tripods come with a little leveling bubble in them. Even going back quite a few years, they came with that. So it's easy for me to get the tripod level. I put the mount on here, and then they make a slick little app that, it's a little screenshot of my iPhone. Um, this is the app that runs on the iPhone, <coughs> and the only thing you have, you don't even need to even pay attention to this top app, right? If, if, you will let, if you let it use your uh, GPS through your iPhone, it will calculate exactly where you are. It gives you this little green crosshair, and all you need to do if your mountain's level is put that crosshair on flares. And that mount is perfectly aligned. Um, they make it really easy to do that. There's a locking screw, so you can move it in uh, you know, side to side, and get it relatively close. Um, when you turn the mount on, which you won't be able to see here because it's fairly dim, but there's this illuminated reticle, this whole display right here is what you see inside inside the alignment scope. And then in the front of the scope, there's a fine adjustment. So I don't know if you can see that, but the mount you can adjust in elevation and there's this little bit of air when you go to tighten it up and lock it down, it gets skewed slightly. So there's a very slight learning curve that goes that goes into um, getting it to lock on. Because if you put the if you put the crosshairs on flares and you lock it down, you'll watch flares kind of drift off to the side a little bit. So once you see what the error is, the direction that it goes, you kind of build that into your pointing ahead of time. Um, I get this thing tracked. You know, lock down pretty quickly without too much fuss. Um, just as a demonstration, I brought in this is the largest lens that I have. It's a 7200, and this um, this whole setup here weighs about seven pounds. Uh, sorry, the whole setup weighs about five pounds, um, and that takes it close to the capacity of the mount. The mount does have capacity of um, seven pounds total, and you know, if, if you have all your camera weight off to one side, then obviously it's not balanced. Iotron does sell some counterweights that you can put on to the mount to help ease up the uh, stress you put on the gear system. But with the ball head, you can position the camera any way you want. You can point it in any direction. You lock it down. And there's a single switch on the back. Turn it on, and the only other thing you have to do is set your camera to take your your uh, images. Um, I have several images that I've done through this setup. Um, I'm actually doing another presentation on that, and so I'm kind of pulling off on that. I'm going to segue way into that, so. Just say that there will be more to follow on, on the images that come from this platform. Could you let that out during the break? Can you take one? Oh, out? yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, power. Pardon me? Where do you get your power? Well, it actually runs on four double A's. And I put the original double A's in here when I got them out about two months ago. I've used it probably 12 hours total. Um, looked up at Doug Box Place and I, I 
set it up in my let it run for, took a whole series of shots. And Doug actually uses the exact same mount to do the um, movies that he produced, you know, that he does, the, the time-lapse movies. So he's had great success with it. Uh, I do just single images. Um, but I would definitely like to. Uh, I'm sorry, but we're going to stop it here because we're running into the break time. Had a little bit of delay getting this started. But I uh, welcome to talk to Joe and ask him questions during the break. And uh, I want to mention that uh, each time we get together, somebody has been has volunteered to bring snacks and the board.